So St. Gregory was released from the pit and he prayed over King Teradates and immediately he was healed. Then he arose and he repented of his great sins and evil and he was baptized in the name of the All Holy Trinity. Gregory then returned to Caesarea Cappadocia, to the Metropolitan there, and he received ordination and consecration to be the first Catholicos of Armenia. And he returned to Armenia. And then Tiridates the king and Gregory the Catholicos set out to work together for the conversion of the entire nation. They tore down pagan temples and they helped evangelize and catechize uh, and form the Armenian people into, the re into preparation for reception into baptism, holy baptism, which is illumination. And that is why Gregory is called St. Gregory the Enlightener because he brought the light of Christ from the church into the land of Armenia, which was filled with darkness, and illuminated them with Christ's light. And so in 301 AD, Armenia became the first nation on earth to turn to God from idols, to serve the living and the true God. Gregory uh, went on to receive a heavenly vision from our Lord to build what is today one of the oldest cathedrals on earth, and perhaps the oldest cruciform church, a church built in the, sign, in the shape of a cross, and that is Holy Echmiazin. And this vision of Gregory's was that he saw our Lord descend with a golden hammer and strike the earth, and he was told to build this Christian temple there, this great Christian temple. And the name that was given to it is Echmiazin. And Echmiazin means place where the only begotten descended. And this is the, the Episcopal and Cathedral uh, Church uh, for the primatial see of the Armenian Church to this day. And so now let us have a reflection and application on the life of St. Gregory. There's so many lessons that we can learn from St. Gregory the Enlightener for our own day. First, he was, a, he was a victim of political persecution, being forced into exile. He was punished, uh, you know, for the sins of his father. And there's a, there's a lot of political persecution going on in our own country today. Unjust. People who, just because they disagree with a certain view, are taking away their, their human rights and their freedoms. And this is wrong. And all people should be against that. Because the shoe could always go on the other foot. We should have freedom. Freedom to express our differing views and then to let the, uh, you know, let a consensus or let the truth prevail of what is true. Uh, also, instead of saying, staying safe in the land of Cappadocia, he went back to his homeland out of love for his people who were totally lost in the darkness and ignorance of paganism. And we see much darkness in our own land today. Uh, as people turn farther and farther away from the light of Christ. There is so much confusion in our land uh, about what marriage is for, about what sex is for, about what babies are even for, uh, about sex and gender of a person, um, and even what life itself is about. People don't know the difference between love and perversion. People have compassion on those who do wicked, and they have scorn for those who do good. And yet Gregory faced a similar reality, and he bore his people's sins in his own person and in his heart. And out of compassion, he returned to them, again, to bring them the light of Christ. And even after he had witnessed the horrible martyrdoms of the peaceful and innocent nuns, Herypsime and Guyane and their companions, it's like 32 to 35 of them. They wondered when this terrible, terrible uh, martyrdom. Uh, Gregory still did not give up on his people. And even after he was tortured horribly and incarcerated for over 13 to 15 years, by the grace of God, he survived because of his faith in Christ. And in order to be successful or even to be faithful in this country, we need Christians who have the similar convictions. We need some Christians who are ready to suffer 
and to witness. And remember the name, the word martyrdom, martyrios, comes from a Greek word which simply means to witness. And we have to be willing to witness to Christ in order to bring people to Christ. If we're not willing to suffer for our Lord and witness to the truth, how is the faith going to be spread? How is the truth going to be known? And so we, we don't see a lot of this in our day, but the saints and the martyrs have always been the exception to the rule, and those are the ones who stand up. And remember, it was a maxim in the early church that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the faith. And this is how um, Armenia itself was converted, through the sufferings of the martyrs and the witness. And people saw the, the power of God in people's lives, and this is what brought them to conversion. So St. Gregory is truly a saint for our own day and a man for our times. Through the prayers of St. Gregory the Enlightener, may we re recommit our lives to Christ. May we also recommit ourselves to sharing and to witnessing and to, to bearing witness, even to the point of martyrdom if necessary, to his truth for the benefit and the salvation of others. We ask this in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ and joyous feast of St. Gregory, our holy enlightener. Joyous feast.